So at your at your leisure, sir. <clears throat> All right, yeah, yeah, get a sip of this coconut water here. Fair enough. I love coconut water. I'm, I'm I went with a kombucha this evening. Oh, nice! Look at that. With Marcus not here to make fun of our drink choices, we went, <laughs> yes. uh, <laughs> it went a little more uh, less, a little, a little lamer. more bougie. Yes. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> the world will never know. Hey, I'm Atrex, and I'm Nick. We are working class nerds. Cue the intro. Right, we are working class nerds, the podcast that gives you no information about your favorite information. Today is Thursday, February 2nd, 2022, and you can find this Marcus Free podcast on Apple Podcasts, Buzzsprout, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Rumble, and anywhere you can find podcasts in the galaxy far, far away. You can also find every single Working Class Nerds episode on YouTube. Just search for the Working Class Nerds podcast or go to youtube.com slash MarcusB814, click on playlists, click on Working Class Nerds, and boom! Every episode past and present right at your fingertips. I may not stream anymore, but Marcus streams Garbage Destiny 2 and never any other games at twitch.tv slash MarcusB814. And you can find me play playing video games every single Monday night at twitch.tv slash nickvern51. And you can also find us on social media. I'm Atrax underscore A. And I'm at Nick Vern. That's an AGK VR. And in this week's episode, it's a Nick and Atrax attack. We came, attack. we came, we saw, we conquered. And what did we conquer? The whole episode this week. Marcus's feeble birthday shenanigans were no match for the power of the nerds. So anyways. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> uh, so anyways, Atrax, what have you been up to? Nick, I am so glad you asked. Thank you so much. I am enjoying the ability to talk so much Destiny trash <laughs> and have no rebuttal whatsoever on this episode. Ah, it's the worst. And Marcus is going to be hearing it in his car probably sometime next week because that'll be how long it takes to get the episode out. <laughs> and uh, I, wow, I, that was so kind of you the way you worded that. The way you just. Thank you. That's the nicest way someone's called me a lazy fuck ever. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the YouTube version takes a while too. There's a little bit of delay for the YouTube version. That, that that's happened quite a quite a bit. I can't even imagine our Rumble listeners. Fair enough. Um, but <laughs> yes, Marcus is gone though, and uh, hope you're doing well, Marcus. Whenever you hear this episode, I started playing Warframe this week. I have been on this kind of uh, train of playing a bunch of different games because I'm trying to kind of find a game that I can vibe with and create some content for because, you know, I haven't been streaming in a while. Right. I do plan on doing one, like, last big, awesome stream that I have big plans for, and it's it's in the mind, It's but it's there's a lot of things to plan for and work on and things of that nature. So in the meantime, I'm trying to work on that content all that good stuff not leave the community totally dry for the atrax gaming stuff so i've been playing warframe warframe is a great uh game recommended by rayu mostly uh i've heard mostly from rayu yeah he's been playing a lot of it and i've been enjoying it so free to play obviously i got a bunch of cool skins and stuff from twitch prime because twitch prime gaming gives you cool stuff and that's not a sponsor thing it's just Hey, they give you cool stuff. They do. And uh, so I got a cool like purpley space ninja and I can run around and there's all these clueless little, you know, imps. Well, they're not really imps, but they look like imps. They're just kind of running around and I'm slicing them up all space ninja style. And that's like kind of it. There's a ton of loot and boxes and chests. And I've been cutting them all open, but they mostly just contain small amounts of credits. Okay. And then maybe I just haven't figured out the crafting system or something, but there seems to be you gain a bunch of these like weapon and Warframe mods, and then you can transmute like four of them 
together with some credits in hopes that you will gain a stronger mod, right? That's cool. Well, I've done that a few times, but like the amount of credits that I get, I can only transmute a few at a time. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting like a ton of weapon mods. Oh. So I just have like an overabundance of mods and not enough credits to transmute them all to combine them. And maybe I need to play more and, and get more into it. I'm sure that there are Warframe players out there that are like, you're doing that wrong, you idiot. You're just supposed to save them. And, you know. Right. Oh, well. But that's how it feels so far is the game was very, oh, hey, and you can get weapon mods and you can combine them with a little bit of credits. And so it felt to me like, okay, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. That's how you play the game. Which right. I'm cool with that. You know, like I like that space ninja around, loot some chests, kill some bosses, you know, combine some cards, power yourself up. I can fall into that gameplay role, especially with friends. Yeah, I'm with you. But I don't know. It just seems very limiting on I'm running around and cutting open every chest that I find. And there's a lot of them but I'm only getting a few credits. So it's just kind of, I don't know. It's it's very mid-tier. Maybe I need to delve into it a little bit more. But from the first, I don't know, I think it's like five hours that I've played it. From the first five hours, it seems a little bit askew in one way. I, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like the, the economy kind of needs some tweaking or something. Right, at least in the early game. Or right. maybe the early tutorial shouldn't focus so much on combining the mods if that's not really the way that you're supposed to do it. Right. And I guess the meta will always shift behind what the developers can do, right? Because as soon as the developers change something, then the meta shifts. That's true. So yeah. I, I can only imagine that poor dev team for a free to play game. You know, that's that's gotta be tough. Yeah. I yeah. That's a that yeah. I, I can't imagine working on a free to play game. I feel like that's a lot of it makes it really tricky to like be creative, you know, because you have to. I think. Th no, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say because uh, you have to like work in certain mechanics on, you know, just to make money versus just like right. making a game that you like because it's fun. Right. It's got to be a tough balance because I imagine if you if you work for like a big game company, you know, yeah, I imagine the people at Activision Blizzard aren't worried too much about Warzone being free to play, right? You know, like I, if if you're working on Warzone, that's got to be. But if you're like a small de game developer, and I don't know who develops Warframe, that's a good question. Warframe developer. Let's see here. Uh, Digital Extreme and Panic Button. Let's see. What else does Digital Extremes make? Is Warframe based in any... Like, is that in the 40K universe or no? I don't no, think I'm so. thinking of Warhammer. I think that's Warhammer. Yeah, no. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, this is a third-person online action game set in an evolving sci-fi world. Cool. The Warframe are... Enigmatic Tenno, a race of ancient warriors wielding blade and gun. Interesting. Uh, notable games that they've made are The Darkness and The Darkness 2. Mm -hmm. Unreal Tournament 2004. Actually, just Unreal Tournament. Homefront, Dark Sector, oh, which Homefront. was really fun. I, yeah. I played Homefront. Holy crap, that's a blast from the past. Right? Good old Xbox 360 games. Yeah. I think I played and, it. I played it on PS3, I believe, with my cousin. That's the one where you're yeah. like shooting aliens and stuff. I think. No. Nope. Then no, no, I'm thinking of a different game. Homefront is a Homefront is like I forget who, but a, another country invades the U.S. Oh, and it turns it into like war. the The whole country is just war torn you know yeah and so you have like um local militia uprisings and stuff like that i think that's i think if i remember correctly right and also this is a big blast from the past as i'm looking in this digital extreme game list adventure pinball forgotten island this game you probably don't remember it okay it was on pc when i was like four this is like 20 22 years ago okay adventure pinball forgotten island and i had this game it was in a cd in the case but my computer couldn't run it 
for some reason. It just wasn't compatible with my computer. Yeah. And I was so sad because I loved pinball and I couldn't play this game because it looked it looked so cool. It was like, you know, you had T Rex tables and all sorts of these just cool well, that's adventure cool. type pinball. Yeah. And I could go over to my friend's house and play it. He was like, Oh, you should just like leave it here. I was like, no, I'm not going to leave it there. What if it works on my PC one day? Or what if we get a new PC or something? But right. yeah, Adventure Pinball Forgotten Island. Crazy sidebar when talking about Warframe. But wow, that that is a blast from the past. I'm, I'm going to have to look that game up again. I found the game I was referring to, by the way. Uh, it's called Resistance, The Fall of Man. Oh, that game is great. And you played, yes. you, you fought like the Chimera or something. I forgot what they're called. They're, yeah. They're like crazy aliens with like predator looking mouths and like they had like Mm -hmm. things strapped to them for like energy all over the place it was cool yeah i played they had like a co-op campaign that i played with my cousin wait like whenever i went over there it was cool Mm -hmm. but anywho me i also that was at the time where like the ps3 controller had triggers and i was like oh this is cool Uh, maybe the xbox instead of buttons instead of buttons and i was like Wow, it's like really like shooting a gun, and then and then I think I yeah. got a uh, Xbox 360, and was like, oh, this is also has that feature. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. The, the now to think the things that amazed us. I know. Instead of a button, a trigger. Whoa, Whoa this is crazy. Whoa, it's so cool, so realistic. It's like I'm actually shooting the gun. Now yeah. I have a controller that's like outdated that has. Not only triggers, but underneath paddle buttons and uh, like trigger stops. So you can adjust how the travel of the trigger. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. And now the PS5 controllers have the adaptive triggers. So right. Feels even more like you're shooting a gun or whatever it is. I did find that. I played Call of Duty on there a little bit. And, um, and it was weird. Like the different guns have different trigger pulls. Right. Which was interesting. I was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Like adds a whole new element to the feel of a gun from one versus the other. But also right. in FIFA, that works too. Like I bought the new FIFA game and a while ago. Um, and like as your player, the right trigger is the sprint button. And as your player fatigues, it's harder to press the sprint button. Oh, that's cool. It's like when you like when you're like, you have no stamina, you have to like, ugh, like r- wrench the right. button down to get yeah. him to sprint. And then he's like not sprinting good anyways, but that, I thought that, that was cool. is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I remember the very first time I I went to my uh my family, my my parents' house and they had a P that was like when they first got their PS5. Yeah. And I hadn't played one yet. And so they they yeah, they were all gone and I was just by myself at the house. I was like, "Well, great. I'll play some PlayStation. I'm not interrupting anybody, you know. Nobody else wants to use it." cool yeah and i loaded up borderlands 3 and i remember the first i was trying to like shoot my gun and it was kind of sticky and i was i i didn't want to break the trigger because i thought that something in it was stuck yeah or something like that so i switched controllers i was like this one's this this one's crazy too what's going on here (laughs) and so then finally i got the courage to just pull the trigger as hard as i could i was like well if i break it i guess i owe them a controller and then it shot the gun, and I switched weapons. And, the and then was... finally, oh, now the trigger's different. Okay, so the trigger's actually adaptive. Wow. And then my mind was blown. Right. Whoa, right. what? This is cool. <laughs> that is really cool. Like, yeah. was it like a sniper rifle or something? Like, big gun? It was a shotgun, yeah. Oh, so it's like a, yeah, like a realistic pole. That's cool. It, yeah, it had that kind of, as soon as then, as soon as you broke break the tension, that initial yeah. tension, then it, yeah, it was swung easy. back. Yeah. Yep. That oh man, good time. That is kind of how like real firearm triggers are though. Like there's a break point of like yeah. the mechanism and then it's it's easy. Usually that break right. point. Yeah, once once the pin pulls back, right? Yeah, it depends on the the gun and like the mechanism because some, you know, they're all they're a little different, but yeah, essentially It's true. Essentially there's usually a break point where like sometimes there'll be like a little bit of play in the trigger before, then you can feel the resistance and then you kind of slowly squeeze that's that was the they right. teach you to be accurate so you're not like anticipating the kick and the the shot should surprise you in in theory right. that way you don't like you're not trying to compensate and it goes all over the place but yeah and, absolutely 
anyways um gun mechanics with the working class nerds oh yes you heard it here first oh. all right continuing on moving on uh rhythm sprout is a game that i have been watching for a while i played the crap out of the demo just finished all of it three stars on every level what rhythm sprout is it's finally out now is basically um a how do i describe it it's a rhythm game obviously in the name you click buttons in order to progress through the level in rhythm with the music and sometimes enemies will come and try to attack you and then the more perfect notes that you hit in succession the more damage you will do and then when they attack the more notes that you hit the more you dodge so if you perfectly go through it you don't take any damage this is cool yeah it's a super super fun game and (laughs) i'm pulled up the trailer this is cool yeah, it's it's a very feel good, just kind of simple. Yeah, uh, the gameplay is easy. It's a relax, just kind of vibe. Listen to some music. The art style reminds me of that game. Ugh, I don't even remember what Nintendo, what console it was for. I don't think it was Nintendo, but it was the game where you like had to roll up like objects in a ball. You ended up like rolling up like buildings and cars and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, um, Katamari. Kat- yeah, I think it's called Kat- something. It was a Japanese sounding name. And then you eventually like roll up the whole planet, and then oh, you move to the next planet. Yeah, I, now I got to Google it. I think that's Katamari. Ka- yeah, but it, the art style reminds me of that. But this is cool to involve like a rhythm game in like a fighting, like RPG almost. Yeah, this is cool. And so, and then you get a score at the like most rhythm games. At the end of the level, you get a score. mm Hmm. And you get more stars, I think three up to three stars, unless they changed it since the demo. And there is a story, so you just kind of, you follow this character through, I won't get too much into it, but you follow this knight through his quest to, compl- I forget what the quest is, to save the princess or the kingdom slay or the, whatever. Your classic, yeah, slay the so dragon. Right, right, right. The classic, just traditional story, nothing, nothing too exciting or um what's the word out of the box there you know nothing nothing too serious but i love it it's got humor in it it's a rhythm game and i love 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 rhythm games if there's a rhythm game in the community that you play osu pump it up ddr oh yeah step maniacs uh please let's open a conversation about it because if there's a rhythm game community out there in the nerds community let's Man, hell yeah! Those are some those are some great times right there. I've I've recently contemplated. It's uh, by the way, it's called Katamari Damacy, and okay, and they yeah. have a remake for the uh, Switch. By the way, Ooh. called Katamari Damacy Reroll. Um, I've been contemplating, but what was I saying? Uh, Rhythm games. Oh yeah, you've been contemplating. Meanwhile, back on the ranch. Oh, I just, hey, oh my uh, god, I didn't need to play it twice. Um, the, <laughs> I was. Try to queue up the soundboard, but when you click like preview versus live, it takes a second. So I missed my window earlier when we transitioned off the sidebar. But um, so I've contemplated recently buying a Guitar Hero controller to just play Guitar Hero, but the, All right. they're like a hundred plus dollars. So I was like, eh, how often am I going to use it? You know, do I want right? Do I want to spend like one hundred and fifty bucks on a controller that should be like forty bucks? You know, that might work, might and- not. Did you were you going to go for the Guitar Hero Live, the new style, or the old traditional Guitar Hero? Probably the traditional style because I like. I mean, it's I yeah. think that's what I used to play. Right, I used to be very good at because I was going to say if you can find a controller or something, you could download. I think it's called Clone Hero. Okay, on PC, and it's basically the same thing but for PC, and then you just plug in the controller. That's what I was hoping to do is just plug in a controller into my PC and somebody and somehow play like like that. Yeah, there's quite a few. And also then there's Rocksmith, which is kind of a step up. Mm-hmm. But then you just plug a real electric guitar into it. Yeah, but and... I can't play guitar, so <laughs> See, but that's it. You learn. I didn't know how to play guitar either. Really? And you just I, now I now I can do Yeah, there's some songs like a, a lot of Green Day songs are kind of simple. Oh, that's true. 
and it does take some practice. I mean, you have to have a little, uh, you have to have a little humility and be able to hit a lot of wrong strings. And right, 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 right. All that stuff. But it's not, it's not too bad, at least in my experience. I don't know. Maybe for other people, it's more <laughs> difficult. It's certainly not the way to learn how to play guitar. Right. Uh, I was going to say, how do you like, so is it, do you have to plug it into an amp or you just plug the guitar into like your computer? So I bought the, they sell a cord. I bought the Rocksmith cord on Amazon. I think it was like 35 bucks or something. Yeah. You can buy other non-brand cords that are basically, it's just like USB. It just plugs yeah. into your computer. Yeah. And then it has the, the like the um, bigger, aux I think cable. it's three and a half millimeter, but yeah, the yeah. aux cable out yeah. that you plug into your guitar. Yep. 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 And it just tells based off of the sound and the notes if you've hit them or not. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So if you don't if you don't have the right finger position or something like that, then you don't get the notes either. You know, like if it's muffled or something. Yeah. Um well but then that being said, sometimes it's a little spotty too. Or it's like, it oh I thought it I got that. Always work. Yeah. yeah, or it's I definitely got that. Yeah. But it didn't register for some reason or another. Right. There is a little it's definitely a lot more in depth, but it's it is something to consider, actually. I enjoyed my time with Rocksmith. I think I have, like, I don't know, 100 hours or something like oh, that. Oh, damn. So you played a lot of that. Yeah. I I downloaded custom DLC and all that good stuff, too. Nice. So, oh, speaking of yeah. hours, I forgot. I think Ven said, mentioned how many hours he has in Call of Duty, so I went and looked. And I have 39, <laughs> which I I thought it would be higher, honestly. I feel like I play all the time. Yeah. Well, anywho, do you want me to? Sh- How many hours do you, you want have? me to share? My, uh, why don't you uh, take a guess? I'm gonna sit. Why don't you take a guess? Well, you first. and I are pretty close to the same level in Call of Duty, so I'm below your level, I think. Oh, so I mean, I did use. I have been using a lot of double XPs, so maybe I don't know. I'm gonna say 52 hours. How about 72? Damn! <laughs> <laughs> so the double to XP fair, is paying off for me. <laughs> I bet like five of those hours are waiting for shaders to optimize. That's probably true too. Yeah. I, I think probably yeah. a good, yeah, a couple hours of mine as well, but that's crazy. Yeah. I get it. So go buy Rhythm Sprout. Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> Anyways, it's, hey, it's good Bile, times. Back on the run. You were saying? Back at the ranch. I think Rhythm Sprout is uh, $13 USD on Steam right now. It's on sale 10% off. Until February 8th, I think. Yep. It's on sale uh, on promotion while they release the game. So go support a developer. I think they made some games like uh, Hello Neighbor was one of the games that a lot of people know that they made. So go support the, um, oh, what is it? Tiny Build Games. There you go. Oh, That's cool. the developer. All right. In esports news, dun, 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 dun. last premiere... The CSGO tournament ended really, really good for me. Good and exciting Counter-Strike played from all of my teams, all that participated. G2, uh, Astralis, Team Vitality, FaZe, and uh, kind of unfortunate that Team Liquid lost to Big, but I I don't dislike Big as a team. Um, I think that they're very fun to watch play as well. And like I said, good and exciting Counter-Strike. It wasn't really a total slaughter. It was uh, a nice quality game. So, you know, GG's all around in the esports news for CSGO. Oh, I am Katowice starts today. Or it started yesterday, excuse me. And Cloud9 are undefeated right now. Whoa. Actually, no, they dropped a map, I think. But in their series, they are undefeated. So go Cloud9. Super, super happy for them, and I'm excited to see how IEM Katowice pans out. That's one of the biggest uh, CSGO tournaments of the year. Cool. For those who do not know, where it it's not a major tournament, but it is one of the really large ones that work that bleh, that account for many points in the seasonal rankings. Yeah, I get you. Well, that's cool. Yeah. 
so uh, excited about that. Continuing in esports news, League of Legends, the spring split has started for all regions. Honestly, I'm really only watching one team this year, and that is T1 in Korea. I know that my favorite CS, or wow, I almost said CSGO. My favorite League of Legends player, Doublelift, is playing professionally on a team, 100 Thieves, this year. But I heard that the, the uh, start wasn't so great. So until he starts getting his, uh, his stuff together, <laughs> I'm really going to only be watching T1, which is the legendary team that Faker is on because I am a Faker fan. And that's pretty much it. Been watching their series in Korea. They've been winning. I think they lost to damn one a couple nights ago or something like that Mm -hmm. they only lost one series so far if i'm not mistaken so t1 is also on a winning streak all my teams are winning in esports basically i just wanted to sit here and brag and talk about how great my teams are doing currently because hell yeah man that's as you should that's every sports fan right absolutely when your teams are doing well you talk a big game and then as soon as they're not doing well you just just stay silent exactly Yep. Notice I have not you mentioned just let everybody else. I have not mentioned the Patriots in quite a long time because yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Oh man, they've had some uh, some interesting news lately. Yeah. Well, I will say it's good news that they hired. I think it's really good they hired Bill O'Brien. They have basically made Matt Patricia a water boy, and because I think the Lions are still paying his salary, so they don't have to pay him anything. Uh, and then J- oh. Joe Judge, who was the quarterbacks coach and was like fighting with Mac Jones all the time. He used to be the special teams coordinator, and they put him back to special teams. Like, all right, go go, uh, okay. go back to what you know, because clearly this isn't working out. And they hired Bill O'Brien, who used to be the Patriots offensive coordinator from 2007 to, to, to 2011, in which they made two Super Bowls and had the highest scoring offense of all time in 2007. Uh, just saying. <laughs> Granted, right. they also had Tom Brady, Wes Welker, and Randy Moss. So that's a little different team, but, um, but yeah, it's all good stuff and same mentality. Yeah. And when Bill O'Brien was most recent, his most recent job was, um, the offensive coordinator for Alabama and he was the offensive coordinator while Mac Jones was at Alabama. So now Bill O'Brien's going to be the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. So I, it, this all bodes well, it can't possibly be worse is, is my point. Let's go, Bill. Yeah. Here we go, Bill and Bill. Here we go. Here we go, Bill. Here we I go. Have, da, da, da. I have my faith in the Bills. But um, but anyways. Yeah. Meanwhile, back on the run. You were saying, Atrax? I'm just a Bill. Yeah, I'm only a Bill. Oh, my God. All right. Sorry. Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Good times. Good times. <laughs> this episode in Steam sales. Oh, yeah. Only one that I could really find of note uh, this week. The Spider-Man franchise sale until February 16th, 33% off both games, Spider-Man Remastered and Miles Morales. Sweet. $40 US for Spider-Man and $33 US for Miles Morales. So uh, some good good sales there. Go swoop those games. I played Spider-Man. I've actually played both of them. I haven't beaten both of them, but I've played both of them, I think, about halfway through. Because, uh, like I mentioned earlier, parents are the ones with the PS5, so I don't, I didn't get to play it a whole lot. And usually, by the time I go back over there to play it, and I get an opportunity, I'm like, oh well, I forgot how to play, so I'll just start over, so I don't get wrecked. right, 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 right. And yeah, I just, I never make it. And the last bullet point, the last thing that I have for this week, I forgot to mention it a while ago mm-hmm. because I swooped it up. Back actually, back when they were having a Black Friday sale, um, and I just it got lost in the notes and everything. But I bought the Affinity V2 Universal license. So for a long time, in order to do the thumbnails for the show for YouTube, I was using Affinity Designer version one on the iPad, and now the company that makes Affinity Designer has upgraded to version 2, V2, they're calling it, and their other two um, softwares, Photo and Publisher, they're offering altogether in a universal license $170 US dollars 
is their like regular price yep. for designer, photo, and publisher. And you get all of them for iPad and for PC or Mac. So you can kind of go between using your tablet and then transferring them over to a computer, which is what I use now continually for thumbnails, specifically for the working class nerds. So I just wanted to mention it because I use it all the time. And if you can find it on sale, I I think I got my universal license for $90. And that's for all three of them for iPad and for PC. So both versions. And it's, yeah, it's, it's just great. That's pretty sweet. Um, a cheap, it's a good alternative to the Adobe creative license because, yeah. You know, that's if you're if you're a content creator and that's or you you're thinking about becoming a content creator, one of the things that you want is something that you can pay for once so that you can save up for it and then use it for your content creation. You know, I, the Adobe Creative Suite is like, I think, 52 bucks a month and you can't just buy the software by itself. You have to subscribe yeah. and buy. And I think one thing like Adobe Premiere or um, Adobe After Effects, one thing is like fifteen or twenty dollars a month to subscribe to. So they 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 price it just right to where you really want to subscribe to all of it. Right. And so uh, yeah, DaVinci Resolve, Affinity Designer, Photo and Publisher, great alternatives to the um, Adobe Suite for all of you aspiring content creators out there. Wait, real quick before we move on. Can we, yeah. Can you take a screenshot for the thumbnail of this episode? A screenshot for I the thumbnail? I don't know. Something cool. Or I'm like, do you want me to? Well, if you look at all the thumbnails, we don't, it, it's just like the, it's a template that I use. No, I know. So they all look the same. You want me to throw, you want me to, oh man, this isn't a Marcus episode right, too? Right. That's what I'm saying. And so then, okay, I see. I mean, I we see, can cover the screenshot like this. after the episode, but I'm just saying. We should do something special. Right. Or, or like okay. a Marcus Pog face with like a, like the no symbol, the circle and the line. Yeah, yeah. We got we got to troll or, Marcus some way. We can't just let him off the hook. Last time he wasn't here, we didn't talk any shit. So we got to talk way extra shit now. Right. Oh man, that's a really good point. We have to do something to to really stick it to him, huh? Yes. We All will. right. We will. We will. I will. I will take your idea. And it, oh man, it'll annoy him too that all the other thumbnails are universally the same, Ex and this one is. This different. one is just dumb. Yes. All right. No made. Let's go, Nick. Hey, Nick. What other great ideas and awesome things have you been up to? Well, it wasn't my idea. It was totally your idea. But we instead of streaming this week, it was we played a Call of Duty raid, which was awesome. We played that. It was a raid. It was uh, me, Marcus, and Atrax. The uh, the old working class nerds in a raid, the Adam grad laid laid. Oh my god, raid! Um, and I think that's the only one, right? Yeah, they, they haven't come out with the There's, second one yet. We we did the regular version for all of you, all of you thinking we're elite gamers that we could do the veteran one. We did not. We, we uh, did not. Yes, no, we yeah, we did not do the veteran one. Um, so basically, we got to the last like boss section. Where you have to like defend the door as it's unlocking. We just kept wiping. I really think I just what was screwing me was I chose my weapons poorly. Like I kept my sniper rifle from the intro, uh, or like our marksman yeah. rifle as my second gun. And like there's so many enemies that come in. If you don't have something with a really big magazine and or a second gun to switch to quickly, you get killed in the when you're reloading. So like way too often. So like all three people yeah. need to be like controlling the hordes of enemies for that to work properly. So like next time we try, I'm going to make sure I have a light machine gun and then also an assault rifle like one, two so that I could keep shooting the things. Cause like having a past that intro sequence, it's really not worth having that sniper rifle anymore. I mean, no, you know, it really is. Yeah. It, it, it holds you back for sure. So that, I think that was at least on my end of things. That's what was holding me back from performing better. But, um, but yeah, uh, definitely want to do that again. I want to beat it. At least, I mean, the veteran is is a big challenge, but like, at least the regular mode, we gotta we gotta beat that. We got almost all the way through it, so, um, yeah. I think if I can live through Deep Stone Crypt, we can, we can do this. 
We can do. We could even do it on veteran. I think. I think with enough if, time, if we got Marcus to focus up. If he stopped being terrible at raids, <laughs> even though he does them all the time, <laughs> all the time. I will say Marcus did require a substantial amount of hand holding. Uh, yeah. My back was sore, was, and Atrax's back was really sore from carrying the the squad there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trying to explain to Marcus, okay, you stand on this box so you can see the numbers that you need to decipher. Oh my god. And then you just run over into the console and enter them. Right. Just determine which ones you need. We'll tell you the other three right. to help you out. Oh, oh god. boy. And then he was it's... yelling at us like, just go under the water. I'm like, the water doesn't matter. They still kill you. Yeah, right. <laughs> The the water protects you from the, you gas, from the gas, not the people just shooting and at throwing you. grenades at you. I, I will say though, our Nick, you you and yeah. I, our problem solving and figuring out a strategy without Marcus help was pretty <laughs> was pretty great. Agreed. In a survival scenario, you yeah. know, if something happens while we're at PAX, I think you <laughs> two you you and I should just, you know, take the lead and right. we'll, We'll drag Marcus. Well, along. you know what they say: the best way to survive a bear attack is not to be the fastest person. Does not to be faster than the bear. You just have to be faster than the person next to you. Right. Exactly. So I think as long as in this disaster scenario, as long as we can outrun Marcus or distract him with yeah. like a cannoli or something or uh, a waffle, I think would be more appropriate. I was trying to think of something Marcus right. mean related. Uh, yeah, pineapple, pineapple waffle, waffle yeah. or pineapple pizza. Uh, we'll be fine, you know. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, and we'll have him do the we'll have him do the first phase of the puzzle next time, <laughs> so that like he'll do the first fingerprint, so that when things get complicated, yeah, the, he can just shoot just, stuff. Right, and just don't just shoot the bad man. Um, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're really making up for last episode. Yes. Well, okay. I mean, the the force needs to be balanced, you know. But um. That's true. It does it does get sent this way right. a lot. Anyways. Meanwhile, back on the run. So oh Meanwhile, no. Meanwhile. I keep clicking it to stop it right as it resets, and then I just click it switches from pause to play. Well, anyways, I gotta tr- I gotta fig- learn the system. You gotta turn off autoplay, man. No, it wasn't autoplay. It was I clicked play and then like it would reach the end and finish. And then I'd click to pause it, but I, it already reset to the play instead of pause. Anywho, anywho uh, so now I'm playing it twice. Um, so anywho, I did not get to play any of The Witcher 3 this week, although I intended to. I was just kind of busy with other stuff going on. Um, my apartment is super duper clean, which is cool. Nice. Laundry is done. Actually, that's not true. How long did that take? Uh, that took quite a while on Saturday. Um, that was like... Yeah, vacuumed, ev- well, dusted everywhere, like everywhere. So that, like, behind the computers, moved monitors, like, dressers, TVs, in the kitchen on, like, the crevices, like, the light bulbs on top of my uh, mirror in the bathroom, all over the place. Then vacuumed everywhere, and that was gross. There was a lot of stuff. And then I Swiffered all the hard surfaces, and I thought, I honestly contemplated not Swiffering, and then, like, I... <laughs> I'll post it in the Discord, a photo of the of the Swiffer pads after. But I was like, damn, good thing I did, because it was gross. It was like, the first one was like black, and that was just the kitchen and bathroom. Ooh. It was just a lot of like extra dust that didn't get picked up by the by the vacuum cleaner. But um, yeah, then my room was fine. And yeah, dining room and living room were pretty normal. But um, actually, the floor in here was pretty bad. So apparently I had spilled coffee at some point, and... Ooh, didn't like clean properly so but it blended right into the hardwood so then i came off and it was like oh that's gross but anywho it's super clean now so that's great um that's good to grocery hear. shopping today i feel like today after pre-show today i like even cooked dinner today um right before the show i feel like my whole like living situation is like nicely neat and tidy just in time for the arctic tundra storm to come in it's supposed to be like negative 30 the next two days here. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, like, Dude, I would like, be I would be moving so like fast. horrendously cold. Like it. It doesn't often get that cold here. I mean, it's probably going to be a little bit below zero, but then with a crazy wind. So it'll the feel the feel temperature is negative 20, negative 30. 
Okay, gotcha. But like, yeah, anything under 20 degrees ambient temperature, I get angry at how cold it is. Like 20 degrees is yep. a Fahrenheit, by the way, is like my line of demarcation right, yeah. of like, okay, like it's cold, but I'm not, it's like, whatever, it's just cold. But then like under 20 degrees Fahrenheit, like your winter coat isn't cutting it. Then you need to like put gloves on to walk outside because like putting your hands in your pocket ain't going to work. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, oh yeah, totally. As agree. you get into the like zero Fahrenheit, negative zero, if, like you have to wear a scarf or something on your face. Like the the warnings for tomorrow and Saturday are like, uh, yeah. If you spend fifteen minutes outside with exposed skin, you will get frostbite. It's like, wow, what the fuck? <laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> Definitely make sure all your water pipes and everything. Yeah, are no, I'm well insulated. I'm, I'm good on that front, but the. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be worse in eastern Massachusetts by like Boston because you get like the coastal winds or, or more. But yeah, I think it's roundabouts negative 20 in, dipping into negative 30 around here. So I'm not too pumped about that. But uh, I don't know how you do it. I, I have to interject really quick. You know, when you mentioned like 20 is your line for when you start getting angry at how cold <laughs> yeah. for me, it's 32 <laughs> when I when water starts freezing yeah. and turns into a solid, I get. I start getting so pissed off. Just oh, you got to be kidding yeah. me! Like, I think this morning it was I don't know twenty eight or something yeah. like that, and I was out there scraping the ice at six in the morning in my little yeah. uh, my little snow scrapers. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy comes walking by. Oh, sounds like some sort of bird in the morning. And I was just, oh, you got to be kidding me! I'm out here scraping ice. God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> I'm with you. Thirty two. That's my. I line. think yeah when like i see 32 is fine 32 is like i'm not even wearing a jacket i'm wearing like a hoodie with a vest at 32 but i'm but i'm also like a new englander so i'm not wearing shorts though i'm not one of those that's fair but like you know i played football in high school all through high school i should say so like i was used to like being cold with not that much clothes on you know i guess because i was an offensive lineman and they have that stupid you know mentality you can't wear sleeves ever like O line doesn't wear sleeves. Yeah, we don't wear sleeves. Yeah, being a man means it's being uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Yeah, like I would, <laughs> I would end up putting icy hot or like Tiger Bomb on my arms so that like oh yeah, that's what the go. pros do. And then I found that out. I was like, oh yeah, then this is no problem because it feels like your arms are hot. <laughs> yeah, uh, but um, but anywho, uh, in media news, I'll start with the crappy first. Um, Bad Batch is tapering off, but it did start strong. Like, I feel like the first three episodes are really good, and now it's getting a little stale, a little stagnant, a little not that much character development, but um, still pretty good. Still, overall, much better than season one, I would say, um, if you're, if you're into good. that animated content. Um, in super, super positive news, The Last of Us Episode 3, no spoilers, I legit had, like, tears in my eyes at the amount of emotion that came out of this episode and I don't usually get affected by stuff like that but like every episode of this show has been a 10 out of 10 like I don't recommend shows um without like real credibility to it like I'm not I'm usually pretty critical of shows yeah evidence with how much I've shit on the bad badge <laughs> but um yeah absolutely uh, you know if I, I say it how it is and the last of us is like must watch television 100 percent like up there with whatever your favorite show of all time is. If you like dramas, start watching The Last of Us. Um, I also whether you've played the game, yeah. Or whether not. seriously, whether you've played the game or not, I've I've talked to. I got a couple of my old lady coworkers into it actually, and they're both like wow. running over to like talk to me on when on Thursdays after because they know I watch it Wednesdays. They're like, oh my god, how about this part when that happened? And I can't believe this and blah blah blah. And like I think so. Nick Offerman is in this episode. Uh, he, he played Ooh. Ron Swanson and plays a totally dramatic role. And I'd be shocked if he doesn't get an award for it. Honestly, it's like, it, OK, well, now I have to watch yeah, it. It's like uh, I can't recommend it highly enough. If you play the Last of Us game, you're going to absolutely love it because it's really, really true to the game. But then the in the little spots that it differs, it's better than the game. So like total, totally 10 out of 10. Go watch the Last of Us. And HBO is not even a sponsor. Although, if you want to be a sponsor, HBO, you, 
and put our podcast on HBO Max. You, know, you could, <laughs> we could be the first. We could be the first podcast on HBO. You know what I'm saying? Like, imagine how cool it would be to be like, "Yo, we have this super tiny podcast, and we're gonna give them an insanely important <laughs> and powerful platform to talk about how." terrible destiny of a game no i'm just kidding uh, <laughs> to talk about to say you know describe no information about your favorite information yeah there you go thank you nick for saving me <laughs> from uh yeah from, from terribleness from... anyway hbo sponsor us <laughs> <laughs> hey in uh aie news tuesdays are mandatory fun night in both star wars old republic and destiny 2 where the fun is mandatory but attendance is not um those nights are pretty awesome. It's where someone from the guild, AIE, uh, hosts a night for people of all skill levels in in the the games that they play. I'll be Tuesdays has both Star Wars: Old Republic and Destiny Two, but there's mandatory fun nights and or guild nights. It's the same vibe, uh, same thing, just different name. Every day of the week, pretty much in all the different games that they play, whether it's like uh, Final Fantasy or World of Warcraft, Lord of Lord, the Rings, Lord of the Rings Online, Online any of those games. So, it, Guild Wars 2, Sport Exactly. And if all this sounds fun to you, go to aie guild.org, get our Discord information in the top right hand corner of the website, ask for a guild invite, whether or not you play Star Wars of the Republic, Destiny 2, Guild Wars 2, Lord of the Rings Online, StarCraft. Is that a game? I think it's a game. The Yeah, StarCraft's <laughs> a game. Um, World of Warcraft, all of the above, Pokemon, Call of Duty, whatever you play, so do we. And we would love to have you. So with that, I have to pee. So we'll be right back. Jeez, Nick, hurry up. We're trying to finish this podcast. And we're back. So now it's time for working class questions. Do, do, do. First question comes from Tarquin chicken or steak sandwich. Ooh, this is a really, really tough one, too. I'm going to have to go with a steak sandwich because, at least lately, I've been really vibing with those Philly cheese steaks. Yeah, I think, so, this is tough. Let me articulate myself here. So, my favorite panini that I get from this place called Hot Table, on, if you're from the East Coast or around here, you know what it is. They make these crazy giant paninis. And I always get the steak and cheese panini. So, like... With like it's steak, cheese, obviously, peppers and onions, um, and then like chipotle mayo on it. And it's awesome, but I do like a spicy chicken sandwich a lot. I used to get that like I know. I used to get that as like a um like in school all the time. Like they had spicy chicken sandwiches on Wednesdays. And I always get double lunch so I could get two. And then like I, there's a Chick-fil-A near me now, so like there's a Chick Fil A in Chick O P, Massachusetts. So, huh. so like, I don't know. I Chick Fil A is pretty awesome. Like their product. I mean, I like I like spicy chicken stuff a lot too. I think if I had to be like any day of the week, here you go. Have this chicken or steak sandwich. I'd say a spicy chicken sandwich. But I think when I want That's when I true. want a steak sandwich though, like a steak and cheese, then I I like that way better than I would a spicy chicken sandwich, if that makes sense. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. So it's like the spicy chicken sandwich because I have the same thing. Spicy chicken sandwich from here. It's from yeah, Wendy's. Yeah. Wendy's is great too. Just they have a good spicy chicken. sandwich. Yeah, they used to have two for five spicy chicken sandwiches. Damn, and now. One spicy chicken sandwich is six 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 sixteen. Oh, wamp wamp. So now I'm going that's, elsewhere for chicken sandwiches. <laughs> Sorry, Wendy's. That's how they get you, though. Not happening. They're really in with the deals, yeah. and they get you hooked on their chick, spicy chicken sandwiches, and then they pull the rug out from you. Well, and COVID happened, and all the prices went up. That's everywhere. also true. Yeah. So every day. Spicy chicken sandwich, I am totally with you. But what? if I'm saying I have to pick one and which one I th I think is better, I would go with the steak sandwich because, yeah, I'm Philly cheesesteaks and also just a regular, like, sliced 
steak on a yep. sandwich, you know, with some with some lettuce and some good spicy something. Yeah, that's also very for good. a spread. Yeah, you can't you can't beat that. So everyday chicken, if I pick one top tier, steak sandwich. Sovi asks or chicken fried steak sandwich, which I have not. I was had. just gonna say I've actually never had that, which I know to any of our listeners in the southern regions of the U.S. is like blasphemous. Like, how dare you have not tried that? It sounds so. It good, sounds though. great. I would love to have that. It's just I yeah. haven't had the opportunity. I've had a chicken and waffle sandwich, I, but I haven't had a chicken fried steak. I've sandwich. had chicken and waffles as well, and the hype is real. Fried chicken and waffles at like a place that's actually good at it is great. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty oh, sure yeah. they have that at Waffle House too. Actually, I've definitely had it at a place that was like trying hard. And then I've also had it at a Waffle House and very different experiences, but both great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. oh, man. When you get that, like, nice chicken tender oh. with the syrup and the wa- Oh, man. I'm going to get it. 10 out of 10. I hope all you listeners are, I'm too. Um, and Go ahead. I was, gonna, I was just going to say, uh, Sovi continuing really quick with this questions. Yep. A scenario is posed. Okay, Nick. I'm listening. You win a trip to a random destination for one okay. week. All travel and ho- hotel costs are covered. Where are you going? Now, here are the caveats. Here's yep. what you got. Domestic do- destinations only, so in yep. the U.S. No theme park. Not a th- no theme yep, yep, parks. Yep. Food is covered, and you get 5000 to spend while there. So, like, you get 5000 spending money, and all your travel are costs paid. and food are covered and not included in the 5K. Wow. For a week. For a whole you week. Can, a 5K for a week is you can do a lot of cool shit. Oh, yeah. Man, I feel like that's... T- okay, so just in the U.S., that makes it a little easier because my mind immediately went to like the Amalfi Coast in Italy or like somewhere tropical, which we, you guess. Yeah, I had a couple of places where like Greece too. maybe, but like um, I, I'd probably if I was doing Europe, just a quick sidebar, I'd probably do like a multi stop, like a couple days, like I don't know, five days in Italy, five days in Greece, European cruise. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then, so, okay, so domestically, my brain orig- immediately goes to like, well, the first place I thought of was Disney, but you said not a theme park. So, okay. The next thought was somewhere tropical. And I was like, well, I've been to Florida a bunch of times, so I don't want to go to Florida. And I, I do enjoy Florida every time I go, but I want to try somewhere that I've never been. So I'm like, okay, maybe California or Hawaii are the two places that I thought of. Hawaii is really good. Like, That's a good like choice. A, like a resort with like a crazy spa and stuff too. Because my favorite vacation ever is when my family um, went to Mexico to an all-inclusive that had this like crazy spa experience. I was like half a day long. It was like you went. I remember hearing. Yeah, about it was that. like different pools you go into. It's like normal pool with a couple massage jets, and then like you go to like the the hot tub pool. And then you get out of that and go to the cool pool. And then you get out of that and go to the really hot pool. And then you get out of that and you go to the really cold pool. And then you go to... And then they... Don't they hit you with sticks or No, something? I did not. That Not that one. That might be a different flavor of this spa experience. But there is ones where they do that. Oh, okay. But then like... Yeah, then they have rooms you go into. It's like a sauna, a regular sauna room, and then you go to like a like a, a cooling room, and then you go to like, they give you like a cold towel on your neck. And then you go to like this crazy sauna room where like it's so steamy you can't even see like your hand in front of your face, and it's got like menthol and mint in the air, so your like snots are all coming out of your nose, and it's like a total purging <laughs> process. Then wow. you then you go into like a. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, yeah, another actually. cool room after that. And then you take like a like a lukewarm shower and then like to like rinse off the like, I don't know, sweat or whatever. And then you go get your yeah. massage, which is 90 minutes. <laughs> oh, that sounds it was, amazing. It was the, one of the most relaxing, incredible experiences ever on top of being at like a beach resort. Like or then where right. like your drinks are all included. So you could just like you just, you know saunter your way over after your like totally relaxed massage and you're just like hello sir would you like another would you like your margarita the same type the same type that you had last night why yes sir thank you so much <laughs> yeah 
Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. So I think something in, I'm assuming California or Hawaii or maybe even Texas. Like the coast of Texas is supposed to be pretty sweet or Louisiana. The Wherever there's like a resort that would give me yeah. that type of feel again. That's what I would want to do. I'm sure, I feel like Hawaii would be your that's best That's what I'm bet. thinking too. Hawaii, or prob- there's probably places like that in Florida too. I just don't know of them. And then, um, yeah. Yeah, so I'm thinking, uh, yeah, pro- I'll, I'll, to make a definitive answer, I'll go with Hawaii. How about you, Daytrax? Sorry, I, sorry, I just so, rambled for 10 minutes. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's what this is all about. There's no Marcus to interrupt us and keep the show moving, so we can just that's take That's very forever. true. We can actually articulate our E-E-X-D. thoughts. EXD. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> Being able to get a line of reasoning through it's just I know, so without great. any, all, without <laughs> any like also twos or like. So so wait, the thing about that is, or I don't know, whatever Marcus says, you know, with his with his yeah. interjections. I have interrupted you a couple times. Though, well, you know, so, I you know, not I perfect. blame the slight delay in like communication on that though. It's like it's because the video call, you know. If That's this was true. in person, that it would is be, true. It would flow a little better. So that's that's not your fault. Well, thank you, Nick. I appreciate you. Appreciate yeah. you saying that. All right. So random destination for a week. Um, I would say, oh, man, it's kind of tough because I would want to do something like, I know they host some CSGO events around the country, so... Like IEM Dallas would be really cool to go okay. to, or uh, IEM New York, I think was one that they did. But IEM does some events in North America, so it'd be cool to see a large CS:GO mm-hmm. event where all of the pro teams that I enjoy watching on the internet play live. Uh, hopefully, if I get to spend five thousand dollars, it, it says all travel and hotel costs. I would want to bring. My buddy Harrison with me because he's always wanted to also go to an in-person event. So even if I had to spend some of my 5K to, to like get bring him yeah. out, then, uh, you know, then that's so be it. But that's what I would do. Uh, or it said random destination. So I'm assuming I have to pick one. Um, I would go down to southern california and i would go to the lcs um studio and i would watch the pro games there and just pay for all the merch that i want to and get vip passes to go into the i don't know players lounge or whatever cool stuff you get to do there you know so i just blow big money on a really really cool league of legends experience some sort of esports related thing or some sort of gaming thing Maybe pay for a super super expensive tour of Valve's headquarters up in Seattle, That'd be cool. or something like that, or Microsoft. Um, or if I can, like, I'm I'm just going to continue rambling on about my Mount Rushmore of destinations. Yeah. Or if I could like hop from place to place because all my travel and hotel costs are covered. I would go out to the East Coast and hang out with the working Hey-o. class nerds and Chimeri and all of you people and throw like a big party with two and a half thousand <laughs> or maybe three thousand dollars. And then the other two thousand, I would get onto another plane and go fly out to visit my family in Michigan, which is relatively close there. And then, you know, spend the other two grand out there and it says no theme parks but i would wait for my week to be over (laughs) and then and then i'd go to a theme park and hang out with my family there over in uh in cedar totally get it great great answer great question sovi yeah top tier questions as always and you have another one i know nick what next question says wireless or wired up set up for gaming sorry wired set up for gaming uh, like wireless controllers or mouse and keyboard headset, etc. So I have it depends on the device, honestly, for me. Um, like, for example, I like a wired mouse because I feel like the connection's better than a uh, wireless. Not that I mean the wireless the wireless are so yeah. good now that it doesn't really matter. But just in my brain, I'm like I don't want a wireless mouse. Like I it, I feel more confident if it's a wireless wired. I should say mouse. Same thing with my keyboard. 
But headset has got to be wireless. Once you go wireless for a headset, you never go back. Like I had a the Logitech Nine Series one, the big bulky one. That um, yeah. I, still, I have the wireless version now. Let me just look so I can say exactly. This is the one that doesn't have the model number on it. <laughs> well, anyways, it's the oh, I got it. Oh, I know it's which the one nine, that is. Nine thirty five, the G nine thirty five, um, is the wireless version. But I had the wired one for a long time, thinking like, oh. I don't want to spend the extra 30 bucks or whatever. It's fine. Like, it's not that big. The wire's like 10 feet long. It's fine. But then, like, I kept getting it caught on things. And, like, it was a whole pain in the ass. And then I dropped it once. And then it, because, like, I turned my head in my chair. And, like, I forgot it was plugged in. And, like, it came flew off. And, yeah. So, anyways, I after breaking it, I was like, you know what? Let me just do the wireless. Screw it. And it's game changing it's way better to have wireless headphones headsets i should say but the other stuff i like um i like wired except for a controller i would also like wireless controller and headset wireless keyboard mouse wired matrix what do you think i am a so i agree with you mouse definitely wired um because i i don't know if there's actual science that says that there's that wired is better like actually for the connection or anything but for me in my experience even if you have a wireless mouse that can be wired that connection can go faulty or it's just more the battery itself can go bad and so i've always vibed with wired for a mouse um, keyboard too. I, it's funny because I have a wireless keyboard now, but it's always plugged in. So I, I'm kind of, I guess I'm kind of breaking my own rule, but I would prefer a wired keyboard. And it's only if you can swing it. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just a wired person, I guess. Only, I guess it's mostly because of batteries. I always have bad experience with batteries in everything. They just always die. And I've never had that experience with wired right. things. It's usually like the cable. And once the cable gets fixed, then it's the headphones themselves that start to go before, you know, they don't, they never die on me, I'm with you. I guess, which after gaming and for a lot of gamers too, it, um, it doesn't really matter because they throw them on the charger after like three hours, but I'm normally I'll game for eight, right. 10 hours. And so then they die very, very quickly. But wireless is very nice for me when I really go wireless and when I never go wired is when I'm console gaming. Oh, yeah. Console gaming is always wireless, wireless controller, wireless headset, you know, because I mean, you just, you gotta, you gotta be yeah, able you gotta to be... relax and you can't relax with a cord right. across the room. Yeah. That's not fun for anybody. As you're talking about battery life, I, I forget, like, I will say. The battery on those headphones is not great. The nine G nine thirty five, at least my version, is not. Um, it, I think yeah. pro- I don't know how many hours you get, but it's like I find myself pretty consistent. Like it's like every other Call of Duty session when I've been playing pretty frequently, mm-hmm. it, I got to charge them. It's like God damn it, which is not that big a deal. I have an outlet right there, right, and a long charger, so I can just plug them in and it's fine. But I'm with you with the batteries. Um, what's our what? Yeah, go ahead. But sorry. I was going to say in in all honesty it's just preference. I don't th- I think with how technology is now it probably doesn't matter unless you're going for like a super garbage cheap wireless yeah. headset. Yeah. You know, then obviously there's going to be some sort of input delay or right. something, but with how tech is now even if there's an input delay in the headphones you can adjust for that in the computer settings. Very true. So what is our next question, Atrax? Winter Warlock asks, and I actually don't know who you are, and I haven't seen your name before, so thank you for asking a question for the first time. You're welcome. What is... Yes. Oh, is that you? (laughs) Uh Oh. So, okay. Uh, Oh, oh, man. (laughs) So, quick sidebar uh, with why I put Winter Warlock. <laughs> Atrax is double overlapping. Oh, that's so funny. You got me. <laughs> so man. where that name came from, so my dad, I don't remember what year he started doing this for Christmas. He would st- like it was after we found out, you know, the Santa Claus stuff. So um 
Yeah. He would put like random like characters from our favorite Christmas movies. Like so the Winter Warlocks from uh Rudolph or whatever. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Like the old like stop motion from like the sixties movie. That's where Winter Warlock okay. comes from. Or he would put like Yukon Cornelius, same movie, he's like the prospector that they find. Or like um gotcha. I don't know, like Buddy the Elf or something. So just like random Yeah. Just something right, to keep it's clearly it from you know my parents, but then you know they just spice it up. So that's where I was like, "What fake name should I put?" So then I thought of my dad putting fake names on their Christmas presents and put Winter Warlock. But so I didn't. Oh, yeah. that's hilarious! So anywho, <laughs> so Nick asks, <laughs> "What's your favorite sport?" And esports count too. This is really really tough because I spent a lot of the episode talking right. about esports. Um. And I would have to, I'll, I'll say currently CSGO okay. would be my favorite eSport. And I'll even go a step further and say traditional sports. Wow. Tennis. Okay. Um, I do. Yeah. I, I do want to really revisit the tennis. tennis thing, but going to eSports, what other eSports besides CSGO were like in your contention for the top one? Uh, League yeah. of Legends. Okay. And I I have been starting to watch more Call of Duty, so maybe that'll come up again. Halo is really not anything to be yeah, interested about. Unfortunately, um, same with Rainbow Six Siege. Yeah, unfortunately, I think it's past its, that, uh, past its prime. Siege. Wow, Arena comes to mind as well, but and Valorant, nah, that's that's below all of those. Valorant's boring. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Riot. <laughs> Sorry, Jacob. He used to be super into Valorant. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so, Sorry, wait. Listeners. Did you... Where, how did you get into tennis? <laughs> so, my grandfather really enjoyed tennis. Uh, they had tennis courts nearby where he would work. And so, then, on lunch, then him and his buddies would go and play oh, that's tennis. That's cool. And him and I would play all the time. And then growing up, my friends and I would play. Um, and it's, I don't know, it's its a very enjoyable sport. There's always, at least to me, there's always something going on. You know, it's not, there isn't a whole lot of stoppage. The matches tend to keep going. They're, they're not super, super long. Uh, and then it's also a little bit more of a, I guess it's just more a solo sport and you can, you can't always play it cause you need, you know, you need a core and balls and a racket and rackets and all that stuff. Um, but it's, I don't know. I get you. Just really That's enjoy cool. it. You can hit stuff hard. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's your favorite sport to play would be paintball for me. Um, obviously cause I still play that competitively, but the, uh, favorite sport probably to watch is like football, American football. That's the, that's what I'm most into. Yeah, football, and then I do like soccer as well. As a notable mention, um, okay. I, I like watching paintball, but I can only really watch for like an hour, maybe, and then I'm like, all right, I'm I'm done with this. I'm I I, I get the gist of what's yeah. happening. You know, I, I'm more excited, not necessarily for the right. gameplay, because I I can, not that I can do the same stuff the pros do, but I get i get what's happening you know it's like like i could never throw a football yeah. like tom brady but i can shoot somebody off the break like a pro would you know i don't know if that translate right. exactly if you don't know what stuff about paintball but um so like yeah after a while it's like oh i just really want to see who ends up winning not so much the the gameplay happening um whereas like in football yeah like, i can i appreciate like really good blocks like great runs for running back or like crazy catches you know like all, all that and like big yeah. defensive stops like there's a lot to appreciate as things that like i could not do and probably could never do genetically you know so i think it's a little different right. experience but yeah i think ultimately football is my my final answer um yeah that's a good one sophie asks uh oh sorry yes us only blah 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 uh what Sorry, Sophie asks, what is your favorite pizza-like product? Meaning pizza rolls, bagel bites, stromboli. I'm going to put calzones in here, too, which is very similar to stromboli. Uh, so what's your favorite pizza-adjacent product? 
not my favorite, but quick notable Ooh. mention, pizza flavored Pringles. And flavor blasted yeah. flavor those blasted pizza goldfish too. Not my favorites, but those are definitely mm-hmm. notable some pizza stacks. Um oh, yeah. Pizza flavored things for sure. It's it's really tough for me because I really like uh pizza pretzels. So like when you get a nice soft, you know, I don't know, around here the pretzel shops like at yep. malls and stuff, they make I don't know how they make it. It's probably super easy, but they have a pretzel and then they put like pepperoni and jalapeno and cheese on it. And so then they bake it so you have that wow. light fluffy pretzel bread and cheese and pepperoni and jalapenos sounds- on it. And so then you bite it. It's just super chewy and oh man. So that's what I would have to go. I uh, call them pizza pretzels just a light fluffy pizza Great pretzel call. um i think from like not things you make at home my ultimate answer is going to be not this but like a like a calzone is pretty great i love a calzone i love a calzone and then like dipping it into some like barbecue sauce or like extra marinara or something you know yeah there's this place called dp mm-hmm. dough uh by yukon that was always open till like four in the morning so, like, there'd be, like, your regular late night stuff that closes at, like, one or two. And then it's like, well, you can always get DP dough. And they, like, always deliver, too, to your right. dorms. So, and they were calzones. Ooh. They're usually cheap. I think you could do, like, two for 12 or something. Which, like, I don't know, six bucks for a giant calzone. That's, like, half a dinner plate, you know? Right. Yeah, football was, size. Was, was pretty epic. Uh, especially after some inebriating substances. So... But I nostalgic wise, my like I don't remember how the, this came up, but I remember like having as a little kid English muffin pizza all the time, pretty often. It's oh, like yeah. just like cooking an English muffin, like toasting it a little bit, and then putting like a dollop of like pasta sauce on it, and then, like a sli- half a slice or a slice of American cheese, and you poke some holes in the cheese so that like when it doesn't explode, <laughs> and then you just microwave yeah. it for like a minute or a minute and a half. And then the cheese all melts, the sauce is heated up, and then because you toasted the English muffin, that stays crispy. So you have like these little pizzas. So like uh, that's just nostalgic, but yeah. While we're on the quick topic yeah. of nostalgia, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw these in the pizza like product category, even though it's technically a pizza. Um shout out to the lunchables, like oh, little yeah. mini pizza thing that you could make. Even though it wasn't really a pizza, it was more of like a cracker. hard <laughs> kind of doughy cracker. Yeah, but that was those were always the bomb too. And you'd sprinkle the very clearly yep. baked cheese and the, on like, top and have these little the, yeah, the almost plastic pepperoni. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And you just eat it cold, and it was all stiff and everything. Yeah, exactly. But you loved it. Shout out! Shout out to the Lunchables. The Lunchables too. marketing people must like be like experts in their field because like who the hell oh, sold yeah. that to all of us kids as like here's cheese and crackers with a sauce yeah and you've got literally <laughs> like a ham and cheese lunchables was one of them and every yeah. kid was like lunchables let's go yeah always they're like, i imagine i imagine too at some board meeting they're like all right how are we gonna save on money on on right. production they're like, well, we could have the kids just assemble all the stuff themselves. Right. We could just ship it all separately. She's like, Phil, that's yeah. genius. Absolutely <laughs> hired. A hundred thousand right. dollar bonus. <laughs> you're going to, you're getting oh, your own man. yacht. Uh exactly. Uh um, yeah. You just moved up to the corner. It was probably office, Phil. had to do with those like epic nineties like kids commercials. Like sock em boppers, yeah, and like I don't know, rock em sock em robots is not nineties, but you get what I'm trying to say. Like the Nerf guns are super soakers me, from like the nineties, early two thousands. All those commercials were always like, Whoa! yeah, I don't know. It was like great energy for me. For me, it was always about getting the one that had the Oreo in it because they had like a different candy oh, yeah, yeah. in each yep, one, yep. and it was always about getting the one with the Oreos in it because. When I got because kids at my school didn't really right. get Oreos, and so then when I came in with the Lunchable with the Oreos in it, I was immediately the cool <laughs> kid, and everybody wanted me to trade me their stuff for the Oreos 
for my one or two exactly. Oreos. And I didn't even really like Oreos, but man, I got all <laughs> sorts of stuff traded. And then you'd like get a box that said Oreos on it and you'd open it up and it had like Skittles or something. You're like, oh, I want to like, Oh, I got, yeah, you got scammed. I remember that being like, what the hell? Good times. Um, all right. So our last working class question comes from Marcus B814. And if you listen to the show at all, you know that Marcus is not good at typing things. He's great at speaking, but he is a terrible typer. So what he first wrote was, if you could do an off-topic podcast, what would be your topic? Okay. That's kind of weird cuz like I feel like on our podcast we can talk about anything. So it doesn't I don't yeah. really know what you mean by off-topic, right, Atrax? Yeah. There we do sidebars all the time. This whole episode episode has exactly. been Exactly. We sidebars. even have a sound bite for when we're done with the sidebar. Hey, yeah. Kyle. Back on the run. Damn it, we, I did it again. Had, I gotta just click it and forget it. <laughs> we the sidebars are such a problem. We have to have a sound cue that tells us to shut up and get back to the notes because we're running. Exactly. Late. <laughs> <laughs> so anywho, oh, we man. asked for clarification, or I should say A Tracks asked for clarification. And Marcus yeah. goes fixed. And what did he say? What did he change it to? So yeah, he says, if we could an off-topic podcast episode. That was the original. So I just quoted him. If we could an off-topic. So he said, oh, it's fixed. And now the question is, if you could do off-topic <laughs> podcast episode, what would be your topic? <laughs> so my immediate thought was, well, I would do a whole podcast episode on how Marcus can't spell stuff right. And we just go through the evidence and, and it, it would be great content. It'd be funny. What are you guys talking about in here? Find out next episode of Working Class Nerds. Class Nerds.